affected me built in 1911 by an immigrant family polish maybe he was a lamplighter she had one baby a girl but how it went down i love poetry swear to god our next feature has a cd with him called the bird that looks like two mustaches kissing <laughs> Is that dope? He has been on HBO Deaf Poetry twice. He has been the New York Grand Slam champion. He's a three-time National Poetry Slam finalist. His work appears in over 30 anthologies. He received the New York Innovation Theater Award. He has received fellowship from the New York Foundation for the Arts and the DC Commission for the Arts and the Hip Hop Theater Festival. He is all around dope, ladies and gentlemen. Please help me welcome to the stage our final feature of the evening. smells like. Ew. On the count of three, throw it out. One, two, Not three. being poured into a tin man. My ex-boyfriend smells like salmon and vitamins. His boyfriend smells like kitty litter. <laughs> Together they smell like an animal rescue. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend told me my crotch smelled like B. Arthur's dentures. Oh, B. Know. Arthur in the Golden Girls? Or B. Arthur in Futurama? smelled like Neverland. The fling smelled like a leotard with holes. When I saw the fling, he showed me his penis on his iPhone. <laughs> now I know technology means you get things right away. <laughs> but that's just too immediate. I didn't know what to do, so I ran into the men's room. And I pulled out my cell phone and I photographed my penis. Penis. <laughs> and he pulled out his iPhone. And together we were rubbing our phones together. It was a new kind of sick sex. It smelled like AOL dial up internet. It smelled like the shake waves. <laughs> My, I uh, had an affair with a 20-year-old, so that makes me a cougar. Twinkies and Demi Moore's dildo. Oh! I just want to roll into a merchant ivory cell and make love with a stable boy till we smell like sweet hay. If another love comes my way, I'll smell like a forest of pine, silence, detached. I just, uh, I don't know, I, uh, well, I don't know, um, I, I, the, the, I was at a bar recently and this guy came up to me at the bar and he said, I just want to suck your dick. <laughs> and I turned to him and I got really emotional and I said, you know what, that is the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> No place like the ghetto, or if Tracy Chapman sang Judy Garland songs. <laughs> We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. And if he is a wizard, then we could move out of the 
生特生。This poem is called Culinary Ejaculatory. You said it tastes like miso soup, but it's me, so. I teach poetry to kindergarten kids, and they really love that poem. I love kids, really emotional, like, when you hit them, they'll start crying. Sick Terry fucker. You love me like avalanches of woolly mammoths up my ass. I know, that's a true spray. <laughs> People ask me what I'm doing in Washington, D.C., and I tell them I'm getting rid of Republicans, one blowjob at a time. My sister in Los Angeles is fucking her roommate Francis. He has big white pearly teeth and 1,130 friends on Facebook. My intern is auctioning himself at B Bar for leukemia research. My house guest in unemployment has a love affair with a 23 year old and is plunging the toilets because the pipes may have frozen over. Last night he made a chicken with glazed figs and smelled us on me like fast sex at a restroom gas station in New Jersey. My wireless doesn't work, so I bought a 100 foot Ethernet cord that looks like life support running through the townhouse. Straight cats are peeing on my porch and following me like the sound of zombie babies crying bottle, bottle. When asked if I would auction myself as a date for leukemia research, I'd say if I did, I'd have to make my money market account and pay myself just to date myself, and then I can go home and jack off the name of leukemia research. <laughs> dinner with Kush's wife and his ambiguous friend and Kush is telling this you know, story about how he stuck a toothbrush up his ass when he was 12 and I am wondering if he's telling this anal you know, story to get his friend to come out of the closet. <laughs> my house guest texted me that he ate my Girl Scout cookies and I said, what the fuck? <laughs> Those are my Samoas! <laughs> Fire. This woman named Grace punches me in the heart, punch not to say we're neighbors. I should come over for brunch and I just want to run her through a paper shredder and feed her to the cats who keep pissing in my porch. <laughs> it's been too long since the soul has skipped a beat for another person. By soul, I mean the silver that God has placed deep inside me. Its weight runs through me like schools of dumb fish, complicated as tiny buttons deeper than the front trousers of the tricks I have rolled with. I cannot toss myself into the East River, though my soul falls from heaven in a shower of saxophone and smoke. By soul, I mean I am lonelier than the iron rails of this bridge, echoing the rush of taxi cabs and the good hand job. The moon is stuck flat to the sky. The warehouses are lit by flames of vodka. By soul, I mean I am bargaining my soul for grace of crows, singing between neon and this blackness. By soul, I mean in a hotel room where a man places his lips to your ears as if they were tiny candles, extinguishing the night with his kisses. By soul, I mean God, make me a wind instrument so I can toss myself into the East River. The street lamps are howling for the first slivers of light. By light, I mean falling off a bridge, wrapped in the arms of a god who knows her name. love affair with someone in San Francisco. Woo! And if you've ever text sexed, let's give it up for text sexing. Woo! The text sexing was so hot, I had to wear rubber gloves all the time. <laughs> in the porno of my life, you'd be the never before seen bonus feature. And if masturbation made one blind, I keep jacking off to you so I could surrender all my senses of the world to your descriptions. Your poetry is so lonely, Orpheus wants you to be his lyricist. I feel affection, not a function. Not that I don't want to fuck you, I want to feck you, which is as close to fucking as I can get or say. 
See, fucking is easy. It's like sucking a 24-hour Slurpee. I'd rather curl with you as you speak to me of strippers and wedding bands, and we channel our inner Clive Owen and bitch slap each other till the moon smirks fecklessly, and we're lying like empty salt and pepper shakers till the loneliness is seasoned in feckable affection. In Ireland, feck means fuck, so I am a brown, frustrated leprechaun without a pot to piss or a rainbow to fuck. The Scots refer to feck as worthless and irresponsible, and yes, I have fucked up so much, I have reached the factful pinnacle of my life. I have fucked over muscles and towels from Montreal to Seattle and given more head to the soccer players scoring points in the nets. I have swallowed victory and sucked so much rejection, I left Simon Cowell's nipples hard and Ellen screaming next. I have fucked all the male Mexican folklorico dancers in North America till I was a broken Filipino piñata. <laughs> and I have sucked so much cock, my mouth is perpetually in the ear of the cock. <laughs> the general sells roosters ruffling and crowing their way to the sunrise. And I have taken cock like a Chinese lion, climbing every orifice of my body straight up to heaven. And I am afraid that, that, that I have fucked so much that my fucking you would be the speckless act where I'm afraid that once we fuck, he'd lay by my side like an empty Starbucks cup, staring at a lamp from Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> If only I could fall into you like chalk, I'd wear your halo and know what it feels like when an Aztec's heart is ripped out. And on those tequila nights when you text me, miss you, because you're stumbling in the tenderloin like a colonized junkie looking for flesh. I am in DuPont's circle like a lost taqueria truck texting you back, wish we were drinking together. And when you text me back, wish we were in Spain or the moon, I want to tell you fiercely that the world is sturdy and that poetry can hold us up. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Dylan Yates. I want to give a shout out to Clara Sala and Claudia. We both have taught together uh, we perform together. It is beautiful to see you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, Eileen, Selena, thank you. The, the peeling world. Um, You're amazing! You. Asian, Iran, Sid. Um, Michael Gaffer, thank you for wanting me so much. Um, like he was like, we're trying to get this day together, and I've never felt so wanted by <laughs> by a guy. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Coda, it's chill. It's uh, <laughs> Tell me where to plant myself in the garden. Tell me where the light falls, stunningly supernatural, so I am a black farmer painted by Wyeth. Tell me where we can be so alone, not even those feathered iPhones can pick us up. I'll take my clothes off. I want to build a music box theater in the ballet of my head. I'll curl in the last balcony till I'm tired of throwing roses. Tell me where you stand in the garden, and I'll zoom in on you like a hair slick speakeasy hustler to whiskey. I want this love to have its own IMDB entry. I want the Christian Science Monitor to pontificate our engagements. I want to iron your shirts and punch holes in your darkness. I know we broke up, but for the purpose of this poem, let us compose a postnuptial that allows us to swap and sew our stocking shadows so we can pixie dust to a place where memory becomes a treehouse full of lost love little boys playing Cupid Stupid. In the garden, we can cake and roll in the soil and have quicksand sex, thrusting ourselves into an underground of beats and beasts, words and worlds. I've got the best poems in Plutonic places. I'm sorry the emails I wrote you rose like steps of sweet bread to the sun, 
and got gobbled by the moon. Tell me where to stretch my arm out in the garden till I become a weathering general. I want the seasons to pass me by like so many flocks of birds migrating from DuPont Circle to Oakland. Maplethorpe composed Tarot with a camera. He predicted we'd split faster than a deck of Polaroids. When those slim hip lads lure me away from the garden with their sea shanties, as they surely will, I'll always remember nobody can paint the moon of my broken past like you. Uh, three more. Um, this piece is called Normally Godiva Dates on a One Night Stand, but um, I can't afford Godiva to these economic times, so it's Whitman Sampler Dates and a One Night Stand. <laughs> On the count of three, and I dedicate this to Clara, because um, it's astrology and uh, poetry. On the count of three, please yell out your astrological sign. One, two, three. Yeah. Is there a Libra in the house? Yeah. Libra. We rode the Ferris wheel of Toys to R.S. together. It was a Moulin Rouge moment, till you threw up. Chocolate. Is there a Virgo in the house? You were the Russian psychic tarot card reader. We saw Lord of the Rings together. In the darkness of the theater, we felt each other's Middle Earth. <laughs> you only went out with me because your last boyfriend was a Filipino nurse. Chocolate? I don't mind if I do. Is there a Gemini in the house? You told me you were gay, then you said you were bi, and then you said you were buffet. And I was like, what the fuck is buffet? And you said a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and I said, I am not a little bit of this or a little bit of that. I am appetizer, entree, and dessert. All right. All the men in my life have been so liquid, I might as well date a bottle of Indian water. <laughs> Fuck a swimming pool. <laughs> Chocolate. Here we go. Alright. Is there a slut in the house? What sign is that? I got her. It was the look you gave me. My slut dar is on. It was the look you gave me, the glance you gave me, that I swear to God said I do. You don't get chocolate because you're a one night stand. Oh. Oh. You gotta say that! Is there an Aquarius in the house? <laughs> Alright, so I met this Aquarius and he kept sticking sex toys up me. And I felt like a table from my key he was trying to assemble. <laughs> to a vampire, and I am dying in a coffin full of regrets. Oh. It's a metaphor, it's an empty box.